Hello everyone, good morning. This is Dean Mitchell live from the Kalkine Studios in Sydney and you are watching The Opening Bell. On Friday, the Australian market finished the week on a positive note, gaining 0.98% for the week. The benchmark index closed at the highest level in the last 14 months at 7,063.5. The ASX 200 gained 10.10 points or 0.14% to 7,073.60 at the market open. The top performing stocks in this index are Eagers Automotive Limited, Altium Limited, over the past five days, the index has gained 1.43% and is currently 0.11% off its 52-week high. Looking at major newsmakers, and Oracrobe and Galaxy have agreed to propose a $4 billion merger of equals. Galaxy shareholders will receive 0.569. Oracrobe shares for each Galaxy share held at a scheme record date. Okroboba shareholders will own 54.2% of fully diluted share capital of combined entity. Prime West Board have confirmed they intend to accept into the merger with Centuria Capital. In absence of a superior proposal, Prime West security holders will receive $1.51 per Prime West security. Meanwhile, Crown Resorts Limited have announced that it has received an unsolicited primary non-binding and indicative proposal from Oak Tree to provide a funding commitment of up to three billion Australian dollars to Crown via a structured in instrument. The proceeds are indicated to be used by Crown to buy back some or all of the Crown shares which are held by Consolidated Press Holdings on a selective basis. Shallus Mining has entered binding agreements to buy four additional key private properties at its Julema Nickel Copper PGE project. And Santos notes the announcement from Fitch Ratings in assigning Santos a triple B credit rating with a stable outlook. Carpentaria Resources announced placement of 75.8 million new fully paid ordinary shares at 0 0.033 per share. ASX 200 listed company Eagers Automotive Limited expects to record an underlying operating profit before tax of 98 million Australian dollars from continuing operations for the March quarter. While Seven Group Holdings announced fully underwritten $500 million equity raising to provide a balance sheet flexibility of strong operating performance. Frontier Resources closed the March quarter with 3.34 million Australian in cash. As per the update, the firm is focused on finding top quality quartz vein gold within its Tolkuma mining lease in Papua New Guinea. The S&P 500 and Dow Jones Industrial Average continued their rally on Friday to new highs. Both the index ended the week at new records following the strong corporate earnings and upbeat economic data. According to the Commerce Department, the U.S. home building increased to a record high in nearly 15 years in March 2021. Also, the robust retail sales data released last week suggested the economy was roaring. Meanwhile, reports on China's 18.3% GDP growth during the first quarter hinted at a global economic recovery. The performance of stocks in basic materials and utility sectors offset the decline in technology shares on Friday. The S&P 500 surged 0.36% to 4,185.47. The Dow Jones grew 0.48% to 34,200.67. And the Nasdaq Composite Index rose 0.10% to close at 14,052.34. The small cap Russell 2000 was also up 0.25% to 2,262.67. The US dollar fell to a four-week low on Friday after the sharp fall in the benchmark US Treasury yield on Thursday. As investors increasingly accepted the Fed's decision to keep an accommodative policy stance for longer than expected. The dollar index dipped to 0.14%, with the Australian dollar falling 0.23% to 0.7732 on Friday. Meanwhile, the yield on US 10-year treasuries increased 6.6 .6 basis points on Friday in a late surge to 1.594%, rebounding from the multi-week lows hit on Thursday. 
According to Refinitiv data, the first quarter earnings are expected to be higher by around 30.9% over the previous year, the highest since late 2010, when the economy was coming out of a financial crisis. Top banks including JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup and Goldman Sachs all reported strong earnings last week. Morgan Stanley's first quarter net income jumped to 3.98 billion US dollars from 1.59 billion in the year ago period. The bank said it took a 644 million US dollar loss from a single prime brokerage client and a follow-up trading loss of 267 million US dollars. Corporates scheduled to report their first quarter earnings this week include Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Intel will all report their first quarter earnings next week. General Motors have said on Friday its joint venture with LG Energy Solution will invest $2.3 billion US dollars for a second Ultium battery cell manufacturing plant in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Meanwhile, gold prices rallied to a seven-week high on Friday, recording their biggest weekly percentage gain of about 4.5% since early November 2020, as the fall in the week in the US dollar, Treasury yield and a weaker dollar brightened the safe haven's appeal. The US gold futures settled 0.8% higher at 1,780.20 US dollars an ounce, and the Australian gold miners De Grey Mining Limited, Resolute Mining Limited and Newcrest Mining Limited, as well as Northern Star Resources Limited, remain under the spotlight today. Next up is crude oil, which has softened its fall slightly after a week of gain built on strong US and Chinese economic data that negated the concerns regarding rising COVID-19 infections in other major economies. Brick crude futures settled down 17 cents to 66.77 US dollars a barrel and WTI crude futures fell 33 cents to settle at 63.13 US dollars a barrel. Oil producers Santos Limited, Woodside Petroleum Limited, Oil Search Limited and Vintage Energy Limited could show some weakness today. Meanwhile, Bitcoin, the world's biggest cryptocurrency, fell as much as 14% to 51,541 on Sunday, reversing most of the big gains it made over the past week. Some experts have been hinting as a blackout in China's Xinjiang region, which reportedly powers a lot of Bitcoin mining, for the probable reason of the sell-off, while others have been pointing at sharp drops in hash rate due to the outage. Well, that is all for now. I'm Dean Mitchell. Please keep watching Kalkine TV.